Hello, and welcome back for those who may be watching me for the second time, or maybe more. Some of you, if you watched my last video on the uh, one ride where I was on my trusty Meteor 350, will remember in that video that I talked about being quite taken by the look of the Himalayan 450. I'd also seen quite a lot online, and that I thought I might like to take it for a test ride. Well, I'm very pleased to say that my local dealer who provided me and serviced my Meteor 350, Hatfields of Crowthorne, have offered me to take one out for a test ride. So I am delighted to be here with you today um, on the uh, demonstrator from Hatfields of Crowthorne of the Himalayan 450. Now, some of you may remember from the last video that I made, at the end I played a bit of an advert, and in that advert is some real excitement about what the Himalayan 450 might be. There was music, there was lights, there was action, there was scenery. Some of you may even remember some of the beautiful scenes of suns behind great mountains of the Himalayas, perhaps. And then there were windy and twisty roads that seemed to just travel on to wonderful adventures. And the sun shone and beat off the heated track of just the wildness of the outback, which actually is not Australia, it's uh, the Himalayas, but you know, in terms of actual riding a motorbike in somewhere you've never been before. Well, one thing that they did get right on the video is the rain, which obviously we have quite a bit of at the moment in the UK. So, whereas as you can see from the scenery in front of me, I may not be able to quite offer you the views and the landscape of the Himalayas. Um, you could just pretend that perhaps that I look something like this as it rides by. But nonetheless, I'm pleased to say that I'm excited to be here and I wanted to share some of my thoughts on the Himalayan 450. Now, anybody who's watched my previous videos will know I'll be the first to admit that I'm the least qualified to really give any insights into uh, motorbike reviews. That's why this is titled a test ride, not a review. I would highly recommend uh, Stuart Fillingham, Mark Pulling or the Missenden Flyer if you want to hear some seriously good reviews and each of those have actually done a good review of the Himalayan 450 and I'll put the links to each of those in the description below. But this is the bike that I rode today and I was very fortunate to uh, get some time with. Now the first thing that the dealer spoke to me about when I got to the bike was to set up synchronizing my iPhone. Now I did have some problems, and this is about the most technical I'm going to go into on this video because I think it's worth mentioning a couple of gotchas in case anybody else tries this. In the bottom left, as you can see on the screen, I'm pushing to the left with the joystick. Well actually you need to push to the right, so there was my first mistake for about three seconds. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. And what this does is this brings up a code on the display. Now through the Royal Enfield app you can scan the code using a camera. Now it didn't quite work and I couldn't figure out why. Eventually, when I looked at the code and compared what was on my phone to what was on the screen, they didn't match. It had confused a one for an L, because they do look similar, and it had confused a Q for a zero. So what you can see me doing here is actually manually changing. So <clears throat> I think it's a bug because I think that it's not difficult to actually just limit the number of characters that are used because it is easy for phones to confuse O's and Q's and I's and ones um, that that could be eliminated but if you know that that's what to look for the idea is if you buy one you only really need to set it up once and then you're good to go and then there's uh, the options to how you want to synchronize which is what I do here and eventually what it does is it syncs the phone with the computer uh, with the uh, display sorry uh, and then you can just set in your destination. Now, a, a couple of other little gotchas that I found with this particular thing is that you set your destination up, and if you look at the display, you can see it's about to appear on the display, and that's great. But watch what I do now. I do what I always do. I turn off my phone to go and put it in my pocket, thinking we're all done, but watch the display on the bike. Did you see it blanks? So this is an interesting one. You need to have your phone on. Actually, there's a little thing there that says swipe to unlock, so you need to have your phone on for the bike to work. I think this is how it overcomes the security. It keeps your phone safe, 
but because the display's on in your pocket, it does mean the battery could run down quicker. Now they have provided a USB port just under the handlebars which you can plug in and that can keep the phone going uh, and obviously keep it on charge. But that's as much as I'll cover on that. I'm sure there'll be videos and more details out there for those who are interested in just learning a bit more about how the phone syncs with the bike. When I quickly scanned through the menus a number of options came up including music so I guess if you have the Bluetooth headset then you can use that but I don't have any of those facilities so so here I am, onwards and upwards, getting on with the bike and learning to ride with it. Now as some of you, if you've watched a previous video, what I often do with what I've done with my Meteor, and I'm the first to profess not only do I not know about bikes, I'm not a YouTuber, but I do enjoy sharing an experience, which is what I'm really doing here, as just another bloke who likes riding bikes. But the reason I didn't talk into the microphone on this is I wanted to spend time getting to know the bike and I thought I'd have time to digest that and so I wanted to share some of that with you now a little later in the video I do actually and will switch over to once I get towards the end of the day and I've had a bit more experience as to my thoughts as to what's happening but the kind of thing that struck me is obviously different riding position to what I'm used to different bar different feel different many things but ultimately for those who just want to get straight to the bottom line, I absolutely fell in love with this bike. Now that may be testament to my lack of knowledge of many bikes in the world, I don't know, but it really is an absolutely stunning piece of equipment. It rides beautifully, the engine is amazing. This particular model I was riding had uh, done 1500 miles, so it was run in, so it had kind of passed that initial early stages of being quite tight and it was breathing and it was loosened up quite nicely. It was just utterly responsive to everything I wanted to do. It was comfortable to sit on. Uh, as a Meteor rider, I was very familiar with the controls. It's all very familiar with the newer generation of Royal Enfields. So, you know, just a great job as just somebody who wants to ride it. Now, just to put this in perspective, you know, we have people who engineer these bikes and they will spend days on a problem. They'll spend weeks on working and collaborating. They'll spend months trying to refine and make sure they fully understand it. And the total project of people working together can often take years in the development of something like this. So someone like me is hardly qualified to really say what's good or bad or mark it or give it a score because ultimately you know, they've put something together. Now we do live in a market driven economy where the uh, people vote with their uh, credit cards with their cash and buy what they feel is best but I cannot believe for a second that anybody would be disappointed with this bike um, I've mentioned a couple of YouTube reviewers that have obviously talked a bit about this um, I've also read today in Motorcycle News there was uh, one of their journalists he took it on a 3,000 mile tour um, to Switzerland I believe um, and he had an electrical problem Initially disconnecting the battery and reconnecting it solved that uh, But the problem came back again with the engine management light and that put it into limp mode um, And so you know his experience wasn't great until it's not when things go wrong That I think is a real test of the bike It's what happens and how people to respond as to when things go wrong and because Royal Enfield has such a wide dealership network across Europe uh, and in all places of course he was able to find a Royal Enfield dealer and they fixed it and I think it was something to do with the throttle but if you look up the motorcycle news article so yeah there are issues as every single bike that's ever been made in the world has had you know I've had zero with my Meteor but that doesn't mean that anybody who owns a Meteor hasn't had problems every bike's going to have a problem um, every bit of engineering it's just the nature of the beast that's what happens but it's how they respond which brings me on of all the things I talk about and might talk about with this bike I personally think, and I don't know what people, whether they agree or disagree, but one of the most important aspects when choosing a motorcycle for you to use is actually the dealer. Certainly that's important for me. You know, I'll check tyres, I'll oil the chain, I'll obviously top up fuel, uh, visual inspections, and I'll keep an eye on the oil. I'll tighten mirrors if they get loose, 
uh, general kind of maintenance of cleaning it, keeping it clean and all that stuff. But beyond that, I haven't really got much into changing oil, though I probably will do that eventually. But certainly I like to go to a dealer who I know can maintain my bike, especially when it's in the warranty period. But they're experienced to keep a close eye on it. And Martins of, of sorry, Hatfields of Crowthorne are the dealer that I actually use, which is just assuring. They're only a short road trip up the road from me. And I know that's an important part of this, which is why it's kind of, I think it's great to know that there is a dealer network um, that you can rely on. Not just your local dealer, but if you are seriously gonna go touring, you want to know that there are people around the world who can help you with things like this. So, as it's a Royal Enfield, I feel pretty assured about not only my local dealer, which, by the way, if my sums are correct, um, I think they've been going for about 105 years now, um, established in, in uh, uh, 1919, I think was the actual year, and as I speak, it's 2024. So that's con some considerable time. And, and unlike a lot of ventures and a lot of companies that claim longevity, you know, they've been handed down, they've been bought, they've been acquired, and all those things. It's very few can actually claim uh, a part of the original story and the Hatfields are still there so it's still in the family um, so that's what helps me when I choose is knowing that I've got a good local dealer and when choosing a bike is knowing that that dealer network is trusted and something that I can go to you know any Royal Enfield uh, dealer that I'd happen across. Of course I wanted to take some beauty shots I happen to think this is a gorgeous looking bike uh, in any colour. Uh, I do have a personal preference, I'll share that a little later as to which colour I like best, but this is a great colour uh, and I think it looks nice. Um, its engine is just for a lay person like me who doesn't really understand mechanics to think this is a 450, it's just 100cc more than the Meteor, it's just a different beast, it really is just absolutely gorgeous. The, the framework where you can just hang bags from is is just tremendous. You know, all of this stuff that you can just add luggage to um, as and when you require is good. Strong headlight. Um, I've heard people talk about that screen as being a bit small. As I started to feel with my hand around my body, it was doing something. It was definitely keeping the wind down, so that was helping. And the other thing that I've noticed is that people talk about the side stand. I don't know if you noticed then, as I lifted it off the side stand, I didn't even think about it. I just lifted it up and rode off. So I think there is a bit of a story there, and there are some YouTube videos, or certainly I've seen one, where the design engineers, due to all of these months and years of different teams working together, yeah, maybe the stand is a bit shorter than was intended, but you know what? It's it's a non-issue. It's If that's the negative people are finding, I think, good <laughs> if that's as bad as it gets it's not a problem it's a non-problem so uh, yeah I found the side stand pretty good the one thing that I did notice and it's just getting used to and the dealer pointed it out to me is that it it needs to rev a little higher to feel comfortable certainly to get the power um, and what I found on a couple of occasions is when I was in lower gears and traveling very slow so if I was in second or third say and I was at low the engine was it, it just wasn't quite where it should be it, it, it was just like it needed a bit more oomph uh, I had no problem getting out of that you know when I opened the accelerator it's not like it was struggling or felt like it was struggling at all it just simply just didn't feel as comfortable as perhaps uh, it would like to be but that's not the bike that's me adjusting to the bike and getting used to its slightly different um, response. Now, as well as bimbling around the slow lanes of the country, um, I wanted to try it on the motorway. So here I am flying in to join the traffic and it was just stunning. I had all the power I could possibly need on this thing. There was never any question about whether it had enough power or not. It was absolutely superb. It responded as I wanted it to. It was safe, it was calm. 
it was doing exactly as I'd hoped it would. The handlebars, the seat, the feet, not a problem. It was smooth. No vibrations I was concerned about, nothing really, beyond what expected. Just loving it. Although this video has only been going for a short time, I was probably an hour or two into the ride by now, really getting to used to it and actually just falling in love with it. So the only thing I'm not going to be able to share with you today is of course some real off-roading, taking it up and down some dirt tracks. That is my ambition to with this bike and one of the main reasons I want it is because I want to try that, some green laning in the UK and go on some wide adventures. Um, but hopefully I can give you at least some you know, subjective viewpoints as to how I feel this bike is from my perspective. Now, by now I'm kind of about two hours in, two and a half hours in on and off. I haven't been riding solidly, I've had a break and a few things in between, but I wanted to kind of hand over to the bike while I was actually riding it and share some thoughts from the saddle. So um, so yeah, so here we are. I'll uh, now hand over to myself as I share some thoughts with you, uh, what it's like uh, while it was fresh in my mind. I'm about a few hours at this stage into the riding, so I had a bit more time with the bike and uh, feel a bit more comfortable maybe to share some thoughts. Okay, I thought I'd just share a, a quick viewpoint from the saddle, <clears throat> as it were. I wanted to uh, get my thoughts together before speaking too much as I rode it, which is why I did uh, mostly a voiceover in this video. But I just thought I'd share a few thoughts as I'm sat here while riding along. Um, there isn't much that hasn't already been said about the Himala Himala oh. <laughs> Easy for you to say. The Himalayan, or the Himalayan, whichever way you pronounce it. I actually have got used to saying Himalayan now, but so I'm going to use that from now on. Um, so yeah, there are many views, subjective, which they all are. And there are some great experienced riders out there that uh, have some great insights and good comparisons. I'm not, as I've said before, I'm not a, a really kind of very seasoned biker. I'm going to pass my test in 89 and I've ridden a lot, but not many bikes, I'd say. But what I can say is, is this. It's not the prettiest bike I've ever seen. It's not the fastest bike I've ever ridden and it's not the most comfortable bike that I've ever sat on but I'll be honest with you I don't think such a bike exists that ticks all of those boxes you know I think one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever ridden actually is my Meteor it really is so comfortable and I love it for that I think one of the prettiest bikes I've ever seen is and again it's just subjective it's just my viewpoint is the classic 350. I just think that's a gorgeous looking bike. If you want a garage queen and something to just sit back and admire, that's the one. And speed, well, you know, there's, take your pick, there's plenty of speed things out there. But with all those things out the way, wh what is this then? Well, this is comfortable enough, it's fast enough, and actually it's a workhorse. That's what I'm looking for. I want something that I can enjoy at weekends, I want to go on the odd adventure and when I go on the odd adventure I want to be able to carry little bits, I want to be able to carry tons of stuff. I fancy doing a bit of green laning, I fancy trying a few challenges on a bike and I fancy just popping down a few miles as I volunteer one day a week just to use this as like a short commuter and, and this really does tick every box very well. Um, now let me just kind of revisit some of those points. Comfort, I am so comfortable. You know, is it as comfortable as the Meteor? No, but I could just go for hours on this thing. It's just lovely. It really is just a nice riding position. And one of the things I'm looking for in a bike like this is, is the command, the seating position. I love being high up, particularly in traffic, and just being able to see things, seeing further ahead, just over little bumps and hills and things. You can just see a bit more. It's just nicer. From that sense. Um, the other thing that I kind of alluded to is the sound. You know, this, this isn't the greatest sound. You know, you've got some gorgeous sounding bikes out there, but I'm not buying it for a sound, you know, machine. I'm, I'm buying it as a, 
as a medicine machine, which is an all-round, does everything good enough and well enough. And so for that reason, um, I'm in. I think this is the one. Uh, I am going to do a little bit more courting, so to speak, to use an old-fashioned term. I've got a couple of things on my mind that I'd like to check out, but I think I could be very, very happy with this bike for many, many years to come. But no, I think this bike is something that is just a really good all-rounder. It does everything that I want it to. It does everything that I want it to and more. And it does it at a price which is, I'm not going to say it's cheap because that's, it's not cheap. You know, the, we're living in a, a time when people have to be particularly careful with money. But certainly there's, a, there's certain manufacturers out there where I could be spending four or five times the amount of money on a, uh, on a motorbike um, to get a similar you know, experience, which is two wheels on a road and being able to go anywhere. So those are kind of my thoughts in a roundabout way. I do like this and I think this could be the one for me. I think one of the other things I notice, and I'll mention this as I'm in the saddle, is the gear changes. The dealer was very good at pointing it out to me, but you change higher up the rev range for better power than lower down. Now for some bikers that are used to that, it's obviously it comes naturally. I've just been used to having torque at fairly low revs and just pulling, even on the Meteor you get that. So that's taken a little bit of adjustment and, and I'm still adjusting to that. I am um, just dropping down and just allowing it to rev higher is to, to get maximum throughput is obviously something which is just, just slightly different. And what, what I mean by that is not because I'm trying to go fast, it's if I'm coming into a bend or a corner, whereas I'd be in like second or third on the Meteor, I'm actually Sometimes this almost sounds like it's just chugging a bit, which is um, kind of surprising, the power it's got. But don't get me wrong, if I open it up, there's plenty of power there. You don't need to drop to get the power. It's just, the engine just sounds like it's, I think the term is labouring. Forgive me if I'm using the wrong term, but it's just, feels like it needs to drop a gear. So that's something that I'll just need to get used to. Well, I can certainly imagine a much bigger engine working less hard, sounding smoother. There's absolutely no vibration anywhere on this bike that I can feel that concerns me. Handlebars are comfortable, saddle is comfortable, feet are comfortable, there's nothing that you can smooth it out. I can hear the engine a little more maybe, but the beauty of an engine like this is it's not only tuned really well, but you get to use a lot more of the power. It's almost like you buy all that extra power in much bigger bikes. You never really get to use it. But some might argue, well, on acceleration when you open up, but seriously, how often does that happen? And how much quicker do you need to go than this thing? I couldn't tell you what it is. You know, it does naught to 60 in, I don't care, and it, it's got a top speed of, well, we shouldn't really know. It's not within the speed limits, but it's plenty. It really is. So I can't really understand why you might want more power. Uh, towing a caravan, perhaps, but I can't really see many people doing that on the, on the Himalayan. Yeah, I think there's a lot more right with this bike than wrong. This is great. I love it. So there we are. That was a viewpoint from the saddle. One thing that I do want to add is, as I ride this, the suspension is absolutely superb. It's firm, but not too hard. It just feels as though if I were to hit lots of bumps, which I could do if I were to go off-road green laning, it would keep its footing as sure as it could possibly. 
Um, they seem to have a lot of good things going on with this bike and that just felt good. As I say, I'm no mechanic, I'm no engineering excellence when it comes to motorcycles, but there was just, it was confidence inspiring. Um, so yeah, this is definitely something I could take off the road. So at the end of the day, I needed to hand the bike back, uh, which was a shame really, because I was really enjoying it. But I guess Hatfields would only be too happy if I wanted to, um, to buy one, which I might do. Now I promised earlier in the video to tell you what my favourite colour was. Well, here it is. This is the colour I would go for if I was choosing a bike. And I probably would go tubeless as well, which you can get with this as an option. But watch this space. I haven't absolutely made up my mind at making this video. I would recommend Hatfields to anybody as a great dealer. Uh, they've been going, they were established in uh, 1919 and uh, they have been going ever since. In fact, the, the, the guy who established it is the great-grandfather of the current people who run it. So, you know, it really is a long-standing uh, traditional family business. Uh, and a lot of customers are testament and would obviously would stand by that. So do feel free to pop down there. I would encourage it as anybody who's looking for a good dealer that they can be assured of. Uh, there's great history in the property. You can see a lot of the photos of the history of what's been going on in the past. Uh, the other thing that they also have is they have a lot of um, accessories on display which are worth looking at so you can actually see you know rather than just looking at pictures on a website or in a manual but that's all for me thanks for watching i wish you safe travels on your bike and uh, whatever you decide to do next with uh, whatever you do i wish you all the best bye for now